So are there substitute teachers topics that every time you bring them up, people get mad? You better believe there are. All right, guys, I told you a few weeks back, I wanted to try to start doing some edgier topics and for you to send those topics to me at gregcollinssubstitutedgmail.com. I didn't get very many, but I'm going to tell you what's happened to our Facebook group and how today's show is going to be based on topics that have been shared on there that have been very intense at times have been very edgy at times, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's really kind of me getting back into the swing of things. I substitute taught at a high school th- August through December. Then me and my wife, who she, I've been retired four years from accounting. Those of you that are newer might not know that. And I substitute taught for three years now after that. My wife is a fifth grade retired teacher now, and we decided to vacation most of the month of January. So it's ironic, and I hate to say this because I know there's some Kansas City Chief fans out there. Ironically, our first vacation in January started with a beach vacation at Vero Beach, and we were laying on the beach listening to the Bengals defeat the Chiefs in week 17. Our last vacation was a cruise, and as we were pulling in the driveway after returning from the cruise was when the Bengals kicker, Evan McPherson, kicked the field goal to send the Bengals to the Super Bowl. So I apologize to the teams that can't make it, but I am not going to apologize for being excited for the Bengals because I've been a fan through all the lousy years, so it's nice to have a good year sprinkled in there every now and then. I've got to tell you a story about my stupidity while we were on this trip, and I'm actually going to relate it to substitute teachers by the time it's over. When we first got into Fort Lauderdale, it's been a few, a couple of weeks ago now to begin our cruise. We actually got there two nights before the cruise started, so we had plenty of time. Took an Uber to Embassy Suites in that area, and as we were getting off the Uber and into the hotel. We're all excited. And about five minutes later, I discovered I don't have my smartphone. Yes, I had left it in the Uber. We started calling it like crazy. No, nothing happened. I went to the office. I tried to send an email to Uber And it wouldn't let me because I was on a new computer and I had to verify it through the phone that I had lost. So I ended up contacting Uber through my wife's phone, filed a claim with them. After about 30 minutes, I settled down, came to the realization that I'm probably not going to get that phone back. Let's find an AT&T shop. There was an AT&T shop within walking distance. So we start walking to the AT&T shop. This is probably about an hour after all this happened. Well, lo and behold, as we're walking to the AT&T shop, we get a call. Uh, We had contacted my son. My son had actually texted my missing phone and said, if found, call this number. And it was my wife's number. So that's how she got a phone call. So one of the Uber passengers after me had found my phone and called us, and it just so happened they were vacationing, too, in a condo in the area or an Airbnb or something like that. We went over there. She was within walking distance of where we were staying, like a 20-minute walk. So I went by, offered some money. She wouldn't take it, so I just said, well, I'm going to stuff it in this tree over here then, so you might as well take it. So you got to take some money, and... She told us an interesting story that, you know, even though the Uber driver told Uber he never found our phone, well, what had actually happened is that it had been ringing in his back seat the whole time, and this passenger said he chose to ignore it. And then when they brought it up, 
he acted rude to them, like he wanted to ignore it. And I told Uber all that. And you know, I would have given that guy more money to return my phone than he probably would have made in fares during that time. So I like sharing that story. Yeah, I'll share it with you just to show how I, you know, how how dumb I can be at times. I love substitute teaching. I do dumb things there too. But here's here's the way I want you all to learn a lesson from that. If you're like the person that went out of their way to call us and tell us that they had my phone and didn't want to take any money for that, well, if you've got that personality, you're going to be a great substitute teacher. If instead you've got the personality of that Uber driver that could care less about people had no desire to help somebody out, just wanted to go on their way and ignore everybody else and not be helpful if it means it inconveniences them. Don't go into substitute teaching. Those schools don't want you there. And I'll get off my soapbox. That's my my speech for the day. Now, let me preface our discussions today by saying this. Our discussions on the Substitute Teachers Lounge Facebook group have become a little bit more edgy, have become a little bit more upsetting for some of the people that I kind of like it. I want discussions like that where we can disagree, hopefully in a productive way. In fact, I'll share with you a couple of posts I have made to try to lessen you know, bad behavior. I don't mind them criticizing what someone else said. I don't want them slandering them, I guess is the best word to use. So I'll tell you a couple of the posts. I will tell you this, that because this group page is now trending that way and is extremely active now because of all this, let me tell you what's happened. I've looked back over the past month I've had seven members of the group leave. Only one of them sent me a note that said a certain person is ruining your group and I don't want to be here anymore. So seven people left, 227 joined. So I don't mind the edginess. I wrote back to that lady and said, you know, from what I've seen, the only problem you have with this person is because they disagreed with you. Now, they spoke strongly for their belief, but I'm okay with that. It's not a, this is not a Disney page. This is not a page where if anybody says anything strongly that they get zapped. It's not that. In fact, let me read you. I really only have a couple of rules that I've posted. I haven't even gotten myself organized enough to put it in the rules page. So here's some of the things I said to them. The first one is somebody told me that somebody else had spoken badly about them. I did look for language, and here's what I said about language. Concerning language, I'm not your daddy. I can't tell you how to talk. Personally, I think bad language is usually used to give strength to an otherwise weak argument or position, or when you want someone else to stop sharing simply because they disagree with you. When discussing issues, I recommend that you use your intelligence and your logic rather than your vulgarity. Otherwise, everyone will simply tune you out anyway, and we're better than that. Okay, so I did post that. But the only other thing I've posted that I guess falls into the rules category once I get it organized and laid out that way, I posted, to be honest, folks, I get tired of reading replies such as, you should never do that or that is unacceptable. Instead, give good reasons why you feel that way. Otherwise, you're just stating your generic opinion and that's not helpful. We would rather explore your knowledge and experience with detailed explanations. Now, with that in mind, I have, I give people second chances. I said, listen, this is too generic. 
all you said was, oh, you just can't do that. Well, you're going to have to give me a why. Otherwise, you're just cluttering up this group. And I will give them a chance to do that. I gave one person a chance to do that. And all the reply was, I think everybody knows what I mean. So I zapped both answers. I don't want this to be, you know, just somebody where everybody goes in, be, is trying to be a troll and just says, oh, you're stupid to do that. Well, I, I don't mind you calling me stupid, but you better tell me why I'm stupid. Otherwise, it doesn't belong on this group page. All right. So with all that in mind, I'm going to cover some of the topics I won't read specifically what was said because I know that all these people have published this on a public forum, and I think most of them would not mind me sharing their name. But since it would be near difficult to contact the over 700 members that we now have in the group, I'm just going to talk generically, and I'll be honest, some of it makes me a little bit sad. Here's the first one. There have been many discussions, or at least a couple of similar discussions with many posts about substitute teaching in different areas and about how students vary. You know, I can tell by your post and the way some of these students are treating you that it's very difficult for you to go into work every day. Now, I don't have that problem. I work in a district. Do I ever have problems, students? Of course. I sent one to the office last week. Ironically, I had him back later in the day, and he was very nice. It was funny. He told me that when he sat down with the principal, and the principal told him that you know most of the students liked me, most of the teachers liked me, he said, when I walked in and saw how you were discussing things with the students, I realized that I probably should like you too. So we went from there. Did he misbehave anymore? Uh, maybe a little bit, but it was more horseplay and talking than anything else. But as I look at some of your comments on the Facebook group, I realize I don't want to stereotype an area of the country, so I won't do that. But many of you have a lot more strong issues to tackle than I do where I work. And I'm, I'm sympathetic, empathetic, whichever one is the proper word of those to use. I'm sorry that you have to go through that. If you guys are interested in reading some of those topics, go over to the substitute teachers group and do so. There are people in certain areas who will be punched by students And we can say as much as we want to. Well, I would just march them right down to the office. Well, okay. A lot of students are proud when they get sent to the office again. Believe it or not, they're out there. It reminds me of what I've said about softball and baseball umpires in the past. I don't think ejecting a manager or a player does anything in those sports anymore. By the time you do that, they they want that to happen. We need some other kind of penalty system in those sports. I like volleyball. So get start throwing yellow and red cards. You start telling them if if they misbehave that the other team gets to put a runner on base, that would clear that up. And I guarantee you there are umpires out there listening to this right now that are laughing when I say that. But those are the same ones that say, oh, I'll just send them out to the parking lot. And that never works. They're talking big about nothing. So there are various different areas of the country or various different situations. Maybe within 30 minutes of where I live, maybe it's within 3,000 miles of where I live where people are different. You have more discipline problems to deal with. You have more non-educational attitudes to deal with. You have to deal with students all the time that I'm never perhaps going to have to deal with. And I I am sorry for that. But I will tell you from if you're within the sound of my voice, go to the Facebook group and read some of those posts. They get very heated. Some will say, I can't believe you treated another student that way. The response may be, well, that's the only way I could get through to them. Read those conversations. Some of them are going to make you mad. Some of them are going to make you, like I said, sympathetic. But 
in a bad way, a very interesting topic that we have to deal with and hopefully sharing non-generic specific ideas with each other, we can get through all that. The second big discussion we've had, very heated discussion, is whether teacher credentialing is overrated. From a couple of different sides, some of the people have just said, I just want to substitute teach and not do anything else because getting my teaching certification, becoming credentialed, just takes time, and I don't want to go through all that. There have been stories lately about schools opening up to substitute teachers who don't have any more than a high school education or in otherwise lowering their substitute teacher standards a bit because they can't find enough substitutes. So that's one of the topics that has been brought up. Should I go through the trouble of trying to get credentials so I can become a full-time teacher? Or do I just like substitute teaching? On the other hand, I'll use myself as an example. I, I'm obviously not a teaching certified, but I do have an MBA. It used to be that people said MBAs are a dime a dozen because there's so many people that have one. But at the same time, I couldn't get some of the jobs I got in my life had I not had an MBA. So to me, teaching certification is the same way. You can say that's too much work, but getting certified will open things up for you and open doors in a teaching environment. Maybe you want to be a principal someday. Now, some of the other discussions in the same arena have to do with is credentialing test meaningless now? Is it like, you know, is it just a standardized test and perhaps the top performers are not the top teachers? Perhaps the ones that struggle with it end up being the best teachers? I can tell you this, looking back on my accounting career, even though I was good with numbers, probably wasn't the world's best accountant but I kind of consider myself personality-wise a good substitute teacher to have in the classroom. Between the end of our vacations and I go back to another long-term job on February 10th. This is the year 2022. I go back to that on February 10th. I'm recording this on February 4th, and that's going to go all the way through May. It's back in the same high school again that I've been teaching at, and I'm glad that they like me to come there. Before that, I've been picking up just some middle school days here lately just to kind of fill the gap, and I love going back into the middle school. I love seeing all of them again. I loved meeting new students. I love them saying to me, Mr. Collins, can you come back here someday and substitute teach again? I love all that stuff. I miss the high school too. This means now I'm going back February 10th, The last time I was in that high school was about the middle of December after having been in there since August. So I miss them too. So I miss both sides and I try to contact both sides, but I'm not credentialed. Is credentialing overrated? Some of you teachers that will listen to that will cringe. I think credentialing is the, personally, I think it's the proper way to go. But I'm saying it can be a very edgy topic to discuss. If you want to discuss it, go to the Substitute Teachers Lounge Facebook group. If you want to just stay away because that's not your thing, I understand. Join the group anyway. You can turn off notifications. You can just glance at it when you want to. If you turn off the notifications, the only time it will notify you about a response is if you either started a topic or replied to a topic, then it will tell you other people that reply after that. So you can go at it that way. And you can even turn those notifications off later if you get tired of reading it. But that credentialing, that was another one of the hot topics. Now, let's close with this one. I can't believe I've already been yakking 20 minutes. I could probably have a follow-up episode to this one. But... Sometimes I will read on the Facebook group some things like, let's face the facts, and then the person will go on to state a bunch of opinions. And 
That's what I don't want on the group. Don't call it facts. I hate to even, I cringe when I hear the word fake news anymore, but that's sort of what we're talking about here. If you're going to state your opinion, don't yak on there like it's facts. So some of the things that we've been discussing recently and probably a good way to close our episode today are this. Are substitute teachers teachers? Or should we just consider ourselves people who go in? They didn't use the word babysit, but they basically were implying we are just in there to go and make sure the students do their work. Well, there were several people that took offense to that. I just flat told the person I disagree. Now, keep in mind, I told you how I like the behavior to be on this Facebook group. I told them I disagreed with about three things they posted, and I then thanked them for posting it and that I was happy we could both disagree with each other and still both be correct in our environments because that's the way we want to handle things. But I know for a fact the schools that I teach at, they love me to teach as much as I possibly can. They don't want me to go in there and just be a babysitter. I had a teacher tell me this week, and she really didn't tell me, the teacher next door told me, because she just it just happened to be a neighbor of mine who teaches, teaches at that school now. She said the teacher was excited when she saw my name that I was coming in because she knew the kids liked me being in there, and she knew that I would ha- make sure that they got their work done. That teacher next door to me told me later, those kids really like you. I love that kind of stuff. That is not just babysitting them. That is being a good teacher whether I am credentialed to teach or not. Someone who teaches is a teacher. That doesn't mean I'm as good as the full-time teachers, but it does mean that I am in a teaching situation. And then one of the other things that was brought up on the group, and this might make you cringe a little bit given the area of the country you live in, given the situation you you're in, giving maybe the environment medically that we're all still in now. Someone posted that always stay at least a foot away from every student. I don't do that. Some people commented that they are in an environment where hugs are welcome. In fact, I like the way one teacher said, Some students never get hugged at home. And just showing just an arm around the shoulder type of thing might be the only hug, might be the only emotion, might be the only way those students are going to feel needed their entire life. This school that I went to last week, a girl came up to me that I had taught about a year ago and said, Mr. Collins, it's good to see you again. I kind of consider you my second father, and and I'm kind of proud of that. She felt like I was somebody she could discuss things with. I don't go around hugging everybody, but I know there are some situations where students just need us to show a little bit extra attention. We can do that as a substitute teacher. We can do that and make their day feel better, but I want to leave you with this encouragement. Come and join our Substitute Teachers Lounge Facebook group. We have discussions like that. Maybe it won't end up being for you. It is a little bit edgy at times. It is a little bit heated at times. I try to go through there and make sure that nobody's slanderous, but I really don't mind people strongly disagreeing with each other as long as they do it in a productive way. And that's the idea behind the group. So Facebook group, Substitute Teachers Lounge, and I think you'll enjoy it. I love having the, you know, more laid back discussions on this podcast. We continue to grow. I met some people on the cruise ship that are going to, we became close friends with them. We still, we're, we're the kind of cruisers that still like to do the traditional dining option so that we meet new people. And since you're eating with them, most every evening, you get to know them by the end of the cruise. We exchanged email addresses. We became Facebook friends. And I know some of them have friends who teach or substitute teach, and they were going to share the fact 
that this podcast is going on. So I hope some of you are here now, but regardless, go to that Facebook group, join into the discussion. And I think you'll be glad that you did.